Robert Shadlock for Sunday the 6th of September 2020 for Procast on Sunday the 13th of September 2020. Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to my shed. This week I'm looking at one of the issues I've had with the Tungri joinery. This is the middle, or two of the pieces from the middle wall, the back of the drawer section from my desk pedestal. And as you can see, it's a bit wobbly. So this needs to be flush. Basically the drawers need to be able to hit the back of this solidly. And that's not going to happen if we've got this stupid angle happening. Now that angle happens because this side of this tongue is pointing that way. So this, this is higher than this, which means it's not parallel to this. So when I put this into here, it's not too bad at the edges because you see these all seem a little bit looser at the front and back. As you go in, as it goes further in, it just stops. It stops completely. And yeah, I can't push that in without, without it pulling up. Um, and there's reasons why this happens. There's a couple of possible reasons. So, with the power plane, you have uh, five knobs that have to be absolutely tight, and there's the depth of cut adjustment knob, which doesn't really make a difference. So the first pair are the fence knobs, uh, fence attachment knobs. Now, I've just put this into the vise to demonstrate. So you've got your tool set up, you're plowing away quite happily, um, and what happens is if these are in but not in, they're, they're just touch tight, they're not, they're not firmly finger tight. What happens is this left hand pushes the plane in position and keeps everything level, the right hand has to push down and forward it's the 45 degree angle on the handle. It's not a tote, it's a handle. It might be a Canadianism. I think the right hand, if this isn't quite in solidly, the right hand's also going to be trying to hold everything level, and so it's gradually going to pull into the wall, because with the left, the left hand pushing, the right hand instinctively will push in the same direction, to some extent. And so that means that the blade can travel as it goes down to the side, which causes the, this kind of off-cut, off-cut groove kind of thing. The other possibility, uh, the other thing that can go wrong, has nothing to do with the fence at all, it's to do with the, the blade itself. So that's the blade, it's in solidly, and as you can see the blade is absolutely flush to the Outside, I'm going to say outside edge of that fence. Um, I need to oil this afterwards because I shouldn't be holding it like that. What can happen is if you push that in too far and then tighten it up without thinking, you can end up with all the knobs perfectly tight, but the plane the blade is slightly out of alignment, and you can tighten that up and it will stay there. And you can start plowing like that, but it will gradually dry, draw itself back in, like that. At which point that becomes loose. And so, there's a couple of things to watch out for with the plow plane. So one of these two things happened on this piece. I didn't notice it at the time, so I didn't fix it. You can't fix it with the plow plane anyway, because once it's set its mind on a groove, it tends to follow that groove. What I need to do is do constant reference work from the surface of the, the plank. For that, I want a router plane. Now, you can go back and watch my previous video on the Veritas small router plane. I didn't give it a very good review, and the reason is, I think the Veritas medium router plane is much better value and much more useful function. 
In particular, the small rooter plane is a pain for the blade when you tighten it up as tight as you can go, the blade will still turn relatively easily. That is no good, particularly if you're working in grooves. But this is not a groove, this is a tongue, and tongue work is a different kettle of fish. So I can set this to the correct depth, I can lock it up. Now I can turn it. Now I can try and lock it up again and fail. But now I've got this turn in the, in the blade, I can actually get a better reference surface on this top edge. So for that, I reckon this is actually a slightly better plane than I was thinking for tongue work. So I may have given this too bad a review in the last video. If you're doing tongues and uh, tenon work, that's maybe a thing to be using. I think quite easy. So, first thing we need to do is to create a plane, well, identify the grain direction that way. Create a plane stop, um, and then do this by the ridiculously simple method of just putting um, one of these. Down I need to put that on a bit. Yeah. I'm not putting it properly. In plain stop. Um, I'm also going to put a plain stop in over here so that below the line of the wood. Of the wood. Um, and I could pump it if I wanted to as well. Let's see, let's do that. So I set this. I'm just going to go ahead and start grooving. So I'm going to just uh, take this. Um, just make absolutely sure I've got the right depth, which I appear to have. That's in as tight as it go. I'm just going to run down, going that way. So I'll just... yep, uh, first thing to do is run down the piece of wood. It's taking more off this side than this side, which means it is in fact not square. All there is to it. The beauty of the router plane is it leaves the surface slightly smoother than the power plane does, which um, because because it's working on cutting this edge and not cutting this edge. And now if I put them together, it's still pretty firm and it's a slight wobble. So it's still something not quite right now. Um, but that's much improved. And can I go with that or not? Um, yeah, I'm going to just really do. The problem with hold fast is they come loose. Sure, whether that's the just how thin my bench top is. Right, let's try this again. Now there's a bit more on this end. The start is always hardest because you want to be working with the grain, but there isn't a lot of reference surface. I'm actually going to turn that around. That can work. Underneath. 
And you've got to be a bit careful because if you tip it up, it will, it will then cut the low where you want it to, which you can't recover from. Other than that, it's very simple. Definitely started. The, out, the outboard configuration really does give it a lot more visibility. I'm surprised because of it's because I'm not standing over it like I was with the groove. groove work. I was working on Walmart, I just have to sand it down, but because it's uh, such a beautifully straight grained wood, it just goes really smoothly with the spoil plane, or the router plane. No wobble. None at all. Might have axed the flat. Um, push the bench all the way along. Flip it over. Push all the way along that side too. So the router plane gets you out of a few tight spots. I couldn't have done that with any other tool, apart from maybe a table router. Um, even a handhold router I would have struggled with because it's such a small space. Uh, so, yeah, that's how we fix that. Um, next week, I want to think of group. Ta da! Uh, I'm just going to do a quick check to make sure the audio is working. I'd like to repeat myself again. Um, and I'll come back and do the groove. Okay, I have audio working, which is good.